This is the Yummy Robot made from an M&M's candy tin. And one of the things I like uh, most about this robot is when you open it up, there's a little light sensor cell right there that tells whether the candy tin is open or not. And you turn on the power and you get a little blinking light. Press the start button. Blinking light doubles in speed. But the robot doesn't drive because the light sensor can detect too much light. Close it up, set it down, and after about 10 seconds of receiving light, it starts to drive. Now, if I open up the tin, it stops because it detects the light again. One of the things that surprises me about a lot of robot builders is that they'll spend so much effort building a robot but won't spend any time to tweak it. They'll say, oh, it's complete now, they'll throw it onto a track or they'll throw it wherever it's going to perform its duties and, and, and it won't work right and they'll just give up and they'll throw up their, their hands. Or even worse, they won't have tried um, and it's the, the day of the competition and they won't even have tried it because they built it the night before and it doesn't work right. And usually the difference between failure and success is just a small amount of tweaking. In this case, this is a yummy robot made out of an M&M's candy tin, and it has four wheels. And the danger of a four-wheel robot is, in this particular case, it has two powered wheels with, with rubber bands for friction, for traction, and two non-powered wheels. And if for some reason the weight of the robot is resting more on the non-powered wheels, or it's hitting a bump, or it's taking a turn where one of the wheels that has power to it doesn't have enough weight resting on it, the wheel will just spin in place and the robot won't go anywhere. And that's common in, in, in robots that at least have four wheels. If you have two powered wheels and a place to slide, you usually don't have that issue. But if you've got way too much weight on the slide, it'll also lose traction. Uh, so Yummy had that problem in that it would sometimes drive along and then just get stuck because it would hit a bump. In this case, the tweak was really, really simple. Um, it would have been nice if I could have moved some of the motors or the battery or something to reposition the weight. But there's nothing wrong with resorting to a bunch of quarters or some other weight placed in a particular location. Power it on, press the start button. And the difference in the way the robot performs is absolutely dramatic. Now that same robot, same traction, same batteries, same course, but no quarters. <laughs> it was supposed to at least go a little ways before stopping. This is the main half of the Yummy Robot, and it consists of a PCB motherboard, some buttons and some switches, a carrier board, which is where all the lights hook up, and that's because this circuit board was originally designed for a different robot, and so I had to pop in using a socket. Let's see if I can plug it. I had to use a little socket in order to connect up to the board that was intended for a different use. Below here, I have a lithium polymer battery. It's two cells, and it says 7.4 volts but it tends to run about 8, 8.4 when it's fully charged. The, um, I'll just snap together the two halves really quickly without plugging them together to show you that one of the dangers of having it split down the middle is that you cannot attach a circuit board like the line following board on both sides. So there's only screws holding it on this side, and you can see the two spacers, but on the other side it's blank. This is a side view of the Yummy Robot. This is the side without the PCB in it, and it has a front headlight. It has a motor with a mounting block, and it has a place for the tail light. One of the wheels has a rubber band for friction, and that's the wheel with power going to it and it has a custom-made coupler that connects the wheel to the motor shaft. The rear wheel spins freely and is exactly how it was on the original tin. The wheel with power to it is attached to the motor with a small aluminum coupler. 
The coupler has set screws in it, so those are just tiny screws without heads on them. And those screws put tension between the aluminum coupler and the motor shaft. In this case, I have something called a hex key, which is very difficult to see because it's this tiny little thing. And you insert it into, in this case, it's a tiny little thing. Hex, hex keys can be very, very large as well. Um, you insert it into the set screw, turn it, and same with the other side to either tighten or loosen. I have two in there because with one set screw, it tends to wiggle off. With two, there's just enough force in different directions um, that it holds it much more tightly. And then the wheel just comes right off like that. And that's great for servicing it, as opposed to using hot glue or an adhesive or something that's just clearly not going to work. And there's the motor shaft. One of my favorite parts about Yummy was machining the mounting block for the motor. Uh, the motor has got a 90 degree turn to it, so it's, this is the motor itself, this is the gearbox, and at the end there's this 90 degree turn that it takes, so it's got some gears in there that allows the, the motor output to go to the side. Somehow I needed to get this attached to this, and that's what this blue mounting block does. It slides on, so it's carefully machined by hand on a milling machine to slide on. So you feed the cable through there. So it slides on, clicks in place, and then there's a set screw here, and there's a set screw over here that holds it against the gearbox. The gearbox itself is made out of metal and is fairly strong as opposed to this, this plastic portion right up here. And so it's pretty safe to use set screws on there. And once it's tightened, it's put into place and then there's four screws here, four uh, threaded holes and four clear holes through here so that it can be mounted using fasteners. And that way the height is exactly right and the position is exactly right and it stays in place.